essentially the shadow is the part of you that you don't want other people to know about, right? It's the sort of conglomeration of your insecurities, your fears, uh, your perceived inferiorities. And generally speaking, those, those parts of you, because they are parts of you, were created when you felt betrayed as a kid or you felt abandoned or you felt abused or you felt neglected or you were bullied at school you know for the way your body looked or mm -hmm. uh for being stupid or whatever the case may be and so <clears throat> we all have these parts to us that we don't want other people to know about and then we have parts to us which i'm going to avoid talking a little bit about right now that we don't want to see Right. So there's parts mm -hmm. of us that we don't know about that we're like, oh, I don't even want to see that shit. <laughs> right. So where do we begin? Well, the easiest place, the easiest place. And, and maybe I'll just say one more thing about it um, before I just sort of give you the, the access point. The reason why the shadow is so important is because this is the psychological material that gets in the way of your goals and your aims and your trajectory mm -hmm. and what you want to build and what you want to create and the type of relationship that you want to have the shadow is the part of you that sabotages that that gets in the way is like no you don't deserve that no you're not worthy or no you should stay up until three o'clock in the morning and get shit faced <laughs> and you know show up to that that big presentation that important meeting with that client hung over as hell right so the shadow is that part of you and there's a a great American therapist named Francis Weller, who says your pain has its own intelligence. Your pain has its own intelligence, right? So our work, and as I tell this to men all the time, our work is to start to face our pain, right? I, the first line of my book is a man's work begins in pain. So we mm. have to begin to start to understand what is, the, what is the intelligence of our pain trying to say? What is it trying to communicate? And where is it already expressing itself in our life? You know, because if we can start to pay attention to that, then we can get a sense of what's happening within us, right? So, okay, with all that said, when we do this, we begin to reclaim these parts of us, right? In, in mythology, you see people enter into the cave, face the dragon, mm -hmm. reclaim the gold, right? Yeah. So when you do shadow work, you enter in the cave, you face the dragon, your insecurities, your inner critic, right? That judgmental voice is just constantly mm -hmm. shit talking you. Um, and you reclaim the gold. So that part of you gets to have a place within your inner kingdom where you're not at odds with it. You're not fighting it. You actually have built some kind of a relationship with it. So where we see it is within what, what Jung called our reactivity. So anytime that you become reactive or AKA defensive, critical of somebody else, judgmental of somebody else, shutting down, right? Avoiding a conversation, yeah. That reactivity is a big neon sign yeah. pointing towards your shadow saying, mm -hmm. hey, I'm acting from my pain, from my hurt, yeah. from this part of me that I, my insecurities, right? You might have probably felt your shadow if you've ever been in a relationship where all of a sudden you found yourself like, you know, needy as all hell, stage five clinger, texting the other person constantly, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, I know I just texted them six times in a row and I know I probably shouldn't do this again, but I'm going to text them anyway, even though they haven't responded. Right. Uh, so that's the shadow, right? It's like, I feel unworthy. I feel needy. Um, and I, I don't feel worthy of this person's love and care and attention. So that reactivity is what we need to start to pay attention to. That's the access point. Okay. Right? So what I usually say is don't react, regulate and respond. Okay. Don't react, regulate and respond. And all that means that. is that there's a, I'll just bring in a great author, Viktor Frankl wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He said between stimulus and response, there's a pause. When we are acting from our reactivity, it's largely unconscious. We are not pausing. Right. We're not noticing what we're feeling or experiencing. And for the most part, we're not even um, consciously deciding whether what we're saying yeah. to that other person is uh, congruent or in integrity for us, right. right? We're just reacting. Screw you. How could you? Right. You know, why don't you? You always, you never. And we are communicating from this very unconscious place. It's why when you hear people say like, oh, I, I just lost it, you know, in that argument, I just lost it. It's like, well, what did you lose? What did you lose in that moment, right? It's like, no, you lost your consciousness, 
right? And you lost your conscious capacity to respond to that other person in a healthy, grounded way. How do we catch it? <laughs> How do you catch okay. that? Yes. So, so very, I'm going to give you four steps. Okay. Cause people love their, their bullet points and their steps. And Hell yeah, we it's, do. It's just, it's very helpful, right? It's very, very helpful. So the, the very first step that we need to become uh, aware of is we need to get familiar with the signs, familiar with the signs that we are being reactive. Mm -hmm. So we need to get familiar with the physical signs. What does mm -hmm. that reactivity feel like in the body? You know, mm, when God, you're getting this angry. Some, this is some work here for everyone, but especially for men, I feel like to like actually feel things viscerally, yes. to feel where it hits in the body and what's happening with your heart rate, what's happening with your ten how tense are you? What's your stomach feel like? What does your chest feel like? Why do you feel like that's so important, having maybe been on the other side? I think it is the ultimate lie detector. I think okay. that your mind can lie to you, but your body doesn't. Very true. What's it like to be around a man who is disconnected from what his body's experiencing? Like if he's like, I'm not angry, and mm -hmm. you're feeling like his body's just emanating mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. what's that like? It's a wall. It feels like a wall. It feels like there's no way to get through that because there's dissonance around the truth and always trying to get around it somehow, some way, not listening to not listening to their body, not feeling their body and matching that up with something vulnerable. Like it lacks mm. vulnerability because usually behind that body is the feeling is a truth that's usually people I feel like aren't actually like mad at you. They're triggered into an emotion because of something that happened to them in their past. So it's like you're part of it, but it's not really about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's harder to trust them. Yeah. Right. It's harder to trust them. It's hard mm -hmm. to really trust a person who is saying one thing rationally or intellectually, but their body is emitting a very different truth. Right. right? And right. so. So we have to get clear on what the signs are, especially physically. It's just like, okay, when I feel anger, what does that feel like? You know, for me, the analogy I always give is I'll start to feel a little bit of fire in my belly. And then mm -hmm. at some point, it's almost like the, for people who have seen Iron Man, he's got that like energy piece in his chest <laughs> that sort of like lights up. It's mm -hmm. like, there's a point where I just feel that come online. And I feel a huge intensity in my chest and then it starts to, you know, bubble up. And so... Generally speaking, for most men, when that energy of their anger gets into their head is mm -hmm. when it's it's lost, right? So we have to be able to pay attention to the energy in the body first, what we're experiencing, what we're feeling. So we have to get clear on the signs physically, but we also have to get clear on the signs uh, verbally. What does it sound like when you're reactive? Mm -hmm. you know, do you get louder? Mm -hmm. Do you hear yourself saying certain things? Do you hear yourself complaining about this? You know, the same thing over and over again? Do you hear yourself uh, using what we call universals, right? You always, you never, right? Which are these sort of absolute statements about how the other person is acting. Do you catch yourself being very critical of the person? So get clear on what the signs are when you are reactive. And if you really aren't too sure, you know, obviously start physically, but mm -hmm. inquire with people that you trust. You know, it's like when I get reactive, when I'm angry, when I'm disconnected, I'm shutting down. What does it look like? What does it sound like to you? And what does it feel like to you in your body? And that'll give you some clues as to what it looks like and what it sounds like, and then what it feels like to, to be around you. So that's number one. Okay. Number two is to just name it out loud, right? Just say, I'm being reactive, right? Or I'm being angry, or I'm being aggressive, or I'm being critical, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're actually being in that moment from reactivity, because ownership the first one is awareness, right? Yep. Getting very clear yep. on what you're feeling. And then the second one is ownership, right? Yeah. So naming it out loud. And then third, say what you're actually feeling. Mm. So for most of us, on, in almost every single moment, what we're actually experiencing is not the anger. It's uh, something underneath, right? We oh, were yeah. embarrassed. We were Sadness. ashamed. Fear. Right? We were sad. We felt lonely, yep. right? We, we felt disappointed, Scared. whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so what I say in the book is that it's easier for a man to say fuck you than it is to say i'm hurt oh, it just is yeah. so much easier 
right? And I've felt that in my own life. It's so much easier for me to say fuck you to the world or society or my partner or my friends or my family than it is to say, shit, that hurt. You know, that really hurt what you did, what you said, you know, forgetting to call me or for whatever it is that hurt me. And so we have to practice being mm. strong enough to say that hurt me. I didn't mm. like that, mm. you know? So the third step, say what you're actually feeling. And then lastly, shift the attention from your mind into your body, shift your cognition to sensation physically. Mm -hmm. So Einstein had a great quote. He said, the, the rational mind is a faithful servant and mm -hmm. the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, but mm -hmm. we've created a culture that honors the servant, the rational mind, um, yeah. and has forgotten about the gift. And we as men have been brought up in this culture, um, right or wrong, that over-indexes the rational mind, yeah. that tells us that the rational mind is going to solve every single problem in our life. And mm -hmm. so that's the tool that we deploy whenever mm -hmm. something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. But the very simple truth is that your rational mind cannot solve emotional problems. It cannot solve emotional equations. So when you're dealing with an emotional challenge in your relationship, your rational mind's very limited to figure it out. Very, very limited. So if you mm -hmm. can't speak the language of emotion and you can't feel the energy of that in your body, you're stunted in your capacity to move you or the relationship through that problem that's happening, whether mm -hmm. it's something that's happening within your sex life or your finances in the relationship or whatever the disagreement is. So we have to be willing to move into the realm of sensation. Can I be with the heat of the anger? Can I be with the weight of the sadness? Can I move my mind literally out of my rational thoughts? How do I fix this? How do I solve this? How do I figure out what she needs into what am I experiencing right now in this moment? If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.